In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This week we celebrate in advance one of the greatest feasts of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is the Feast of Epiphany, also known as Epiphania. This feast is one of the main feasts of our Lord. It is right, right after Pascha in importance. And its significance is so profound. The Holy Gospels and the inspired teachings of the Holy Fathers can help us understand the depth of its meaning and, the found, and how profound it is to each of us as Orthodox Christians. As we know from the Holy Gospels, when our Lord was born, only a handful of people knew and were aware of this happening. Not even the people of Nazareth had noticed that the long-awaited Messiah was within their midst, right there in their village. It was not until our Lord reached the age of 30 that he would be revealed to all. At God's command, St. John the Baptist, the forerunner, came to the Jordan River proclaiming to the people their need to repent and confess their sins and be baptized so their sins may be forgiven. We read this in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. Many people heard the call and came forward to be baptized. And one day, Jesus of Nazareth also came to be baptized by John in the river Jordan. Since he was not without sin, our Lord did not stay in the water as others did. He had nothing to confess. As he immediately came out of the water, a glorious thing had happened. The sky had opened up, and immediately the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove coming down upon our Lord, and we hear a voice from heaven say, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. It was at this wondrous event that the three persons of the Holy Trinity was revealed. The voice of God the Father, the Son, as God being baptized as man, and the Holy Spirit coming in the form of a dove upon our Lord to confirm the words of the Father. The Apomodikion of the hymn of the feast marks this event beautifully by saying, Lord, when you were baptized in the Jordan, the veneration of the Trinity was revealed. For the voice of the Father gave witness to you, calling you beloved, and the Spirit, in the form of a dove, confirmed the certainty of his work. Glory to you, O Christ our God, who appeared and enlightened the world. At that time of the Lord's baptism, we are seeing three key events. The first, the skies opened up. With the disobedience of Adam and Eve, not only was the gate to earthly paradise, Eden, shut, but the heavenly paradise was also closed off. The spiritual sky, God's heavenly kingdom, remained barred for humanity. Now with our Lord's baptism, and prayer, heaven was finally opened up again, revealing a new road for paradise for each and every one of us. Secondly, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. It was a dove that signaled to Noah that the flood was finally over. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is bringing a message of a new era of God's grace of humanity. 
This is what we heard today in the epistle, which will be read this week. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And this we will hear in the epistle of Titus. And finally, the third point, a voice. And it wasn't just any voice, it was the voice of God that came down from heaven by which the recognition of the messianic mission of our Lord is confirmed publicly. From this moment on, our Lord officially began His ministry here on earth in order to save the human race. On the Feast of Epiphany, we enjoy also a special blessing, which the sanctifying grace of the great blessing of the waters. For the sake of the faithful, the church performs this great blessing, which is a dramatization of our Lord's baptism. With his baptism, the waters of the Jordan River, the Lord blessed the water as well as nature as a whole. Today, nature of the waters are blessed and sanctified. This is what is chanted at the beginning of the great Ayazmoth service. And during the service of the great blessing, the celebrant priest or bishop prays that with the descent of the Holy Spirit, the water may also become holy. May all who receive this holy water be blessed along with their homes and be enlightened with the knowledge of the true God. And may they be cleansed from sins and the power of Satan and protected from all and any disease. It's for, this it's for these reasons that we as Orthodox Christians prepare our soul to receive with faith and devotion the waters of Epiphany. The waters of Epiphany become an object of a special blessing from our Lord. We see this in the fact that despite that it can remain in the bottle untouched for an entire year, it becomes uncorrupted. It doesn't become polluted or cloudy as other water does in other bottles. It remains clear. No matter how much time has passed, this is something that does not happen with common water. St. John Chrysostom writes about this and mentions this great miracle in his own time as well. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves both physically and spiritually to partake in this great feast of Epiphany with faith and devotion this week. In doing so, may we become recipients of sanctification for the soul and body of the blessings of Epiphany. May the light of the revealed Christ guide the course of all our lives, not only today, but forever. Amen.